Good evening. You are just in time for the story. Take a seat. She heard the rap at her door and squinted at the wooden entrance. Who was foolish enough to knock so authoritatively at her door? The man without was dressed in a high visibility jacket and wore a hard hat that he tipped in a greeting as she threw back the bark door. Ma'am, he said gruffly, I'm here in regards to the notice about the new forestry regulations that was posted at the entrance to the swamp last month. She eyed him with disdain. She hadn't left the swamp in over a century, much less seen any signs that had been erected. She would have eviscerated him immediately with a spell, but the weird gadgets and objects that hung around his person gave her pause. He was an unknown, and she had not lived for so long by being rash of judgment. I do not understand, she spoke in a half-truth. I have seen no signs. Well, ma'am, this swamp has come under the management of the State Forest Authority, and I'm going around to all the structures in the region to ensure that they are up to code. She glared at him. What code? Well, the Occupational Health and Safety Act. I'll need to come inside and check the place out. She smiled. He was willingly coming inside. It would be his undoing. Of course, she replied jovially. Come in. The man immediately coughed at the smell. The damp odour of mouldy wood and the rotting carcasses of woodland creatures burned his nostrils. He was surprised to see a full alchemist's laboratory, not that he had any idea what it was. He quickly made notes on his clipboard, stopping periodically to cough and hold his sleeve up to his nose. What's this building used for? I experiment here and create my concoction she replied. I assume you have a license to take flora and fauna from the forest? He coughed, screwing his face up as he passed a cauldron of bitter-smelling fumes. Ha <laughs> license! <laughs> he laughed evilly. I recognize no authority that would try to stop me. The man frowned. Well, even so, there are several regulations that cover the um, buildings used for... Oh, commercial enterprises, um, and the storage of, he eyed the cauldron suspiciously, hazardous materials. The hag was tiring of his presence. You ask a lot of questions. How are you sure I won't? But he cut her off. Are you aware that this building demonstrates multiple breaches of the state forestry code for standalone structures in a wilderness setting? Never mind the obvious breaches of the Food Safety Preparations Act, and if applicable, the Pharmaceutical Preparations Act. He looked around at her workshop. What's up there? he asked, looking at a curved stairway. It's the entrance to my personal quarters, she snipped, now very annoyed. You live here, he admonished, and quickly vanished up the stairwell into her wretched boudoir. What of it? She screeched as she followed, convinced she would make a stew out of this impertinent human. He rounded on her. You have candles sitting on skulls. The color was draining from his face. You are only now recognizing the, <laughs> the depravity of your situation. The hag cackled. Those are skulls of my many victims who have... Never mind that, you foolish old crone. They're above your pillow on a bed of hay. It's the open flame on an unstable surface above a highly flammable material in an enclosed space with no ventilation that worries me. This couldn't break the fire code anymore if you doused it in kerosene. Fire code? She looked at him incredulously. That's what you're worried about? Not the human skulls of my victim's past? He looked at her blankly, signed off the list of breaches he'd made, and handed her the top copy. Ma'am, I'm an OHS officer. I don't care about people. I care about how they meet the regulations. You have a month to bring this up to code, or we condemn the building. Good day.
The hag stared after him as he left, and then looked at the candles on the skull above her pillow. She begrudgingly stared at those skulls, then the pillow of sawdust, and then the bed of hay. Well, I can see his point. I guess. And that's the end of the story. Good night.